heart and then there are situations where those songs have been sung that just add to the memory of that song uh, 22 years ago that had been 1994 in October uh, in our general conference which happened to be in Milwaukee Wisconsin at the Bradley Center that year on a Sunday night uh, young children uh, not high school not junior high but children sang that song at the general conference it was they were lined up all the way across the platform I just went there in my mind you see and uh, Alyssa I don't know where she's at she was here just a moment ago Alyssa is the only one that uh, is here that was part of that group there were others my daughter was there my son Nathaniel was in that group I'm all right I'm all right just these things move me and uh, it's one of the few times at a general conference that I've seen uh, where there was no preaching and that night there would be no preaching as the Spirit of God moved on that place some of you were there I know brother Noah you were in that service and uh, you actually saw like a wave of the Holy Ghost just make its way around that entire uh, congregation and thousands of people there I mean there were people healed that day that night healed there was a lady that had been in a wheelchair that I know walked after that numerous other things that took place that, that day but uh, what stands out to me is our children singing this very song amen and they sang it in Russian they had learned it in Russian amen and uh, they sang it in Russian and uh, it was just very very moving amen very moving amen and as it is for me today well, hallelujah. I'm so glad to be here this morning yes, with you. God bless all you fine folks. I, I don't think we fully understand what takes place when people begin to thank God. Right. I, was, I saw Patricia over here. and I know you lost your dear husband. You know, and, and I saw you thanking God, praising God. It, it moved on me, sis. Yes. And I looked in the audience, and I saw others here who you've gone through suffering. Some are still dealing with things that, in their life, that they sure like to have it removed. And God has chosen at this moment not to do it. Some of you, it's because of your suffering that you're even here today. The events in your life that were just undescribable and so hurtful, so devastating, have literally brought you to God. And, uh, and you were thanking God today. And it just, it's very moving. I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now. Thankfulness will unloose the power of God yes, in a place really well. When we get away, when we get away from all this demands of God and all the questioning that we can put God through, you know, because we're, we want to know the answer and, and God just simply says to us, walk by faith and no, God, you got to give me more. <laughs> and he says, walk by faith, child. No, God, you don't understand. I need more. And he keeps repeating the same thing to us. And then you, you just begin to thank him. Uh, 
I'm here to tell you that God is well pleased with your praise today. He's well pleased with your thanksgiving today. He's well pleased with it. He, amen, enjoys his people who don't know all things, who don't understand many things that happen to them, but yet they thank him and they praise him. Some of you were thanking and praising him today through your pain. Through your physical pain, you were thanking God. Some of you are dealing with family issues that are just, what can we say, they're not good. But you were thanking God. Yes. Hallelujah. And that, that, is, that is so good. That is so good. So good. Praise God. You know, it's easy to thank God when the battle's over. <laughs> it's easy to have praise on your lips when you when the battle's all done. You know, the old song said, "Don't wait for the battle's over. Shout now! You know in the end you're going to win." I mean, it's 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 when you're thanking God in the midst of the thing. Amen. It's very very powerful. Praise God. All right, all right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Amen. Amen. So I reiterate what Brother Metz said this morning. Please remain a witness this week with your families. Many of you will be with family members that don't walk with God. Be a light, you know. Be kind, generous. Have a thankful spirit. Somebody takes a conversation in the wrong direction, don't go with them. Just don't go with them. Amen. Don't go with them. But have a loving and kind spirit. Amen. Let's go to 1 Kings this morning, 18. I, I, if if it all works out, it will be here shortly. Well, but it never works out for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Kings 18. Hallelujah. Now, if you record things in your Bible, I did speak this. But it was 10 years ago. Amen. But I'm going to speak it again today. 10 years ago. I don't even remember what I said 10 years ago. I'm good if I can remember what I said last week. Or yesterday for that matter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and he looked and said, There's nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There's a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea so he said go up say to Ahab prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops stops you now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain so Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel Hallelujah. So I'm attempt to talk to you for a little while on the, on the words that were given by the prophet of God to his servant when he said, go again. All right. Go again. Praise God. Can we right now in this room just lift our hands unto our God, the Holy One, the Majestic One, the Pure One, there is none like him today. There is none like him today. None like him. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed is your name. Blessed is your name, Jesus. Blessed is your name. You may, you may be seated this morning. Again, God bless you. Good to see you here in the house of the Lord.
The Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse number 20, he says, For all the promises of God, everybody say all. All, all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen. To the glory of God through us. The Amplified Bible, I don't know if we have the Amplified up there this morning, but it says, for as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes. That'd be a great title to a message. Find your yes. Hallelujah. Your answer. In him, in Christ. For this reason, we also utter the amen. So be it. Hallelujah. To God through him. Amen to the glory of God is how that verse ends. The NIV says it just a little different. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It is good to rejoice over the word of God. I heard you just a few moments ago as Charlotte read to us from, amen, from the Psalms before we begin our worship service. Amen. And I heard your response to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is good to respond to God. I have had more than one preacher say to me, amen, that have been with us, that have preached from our pulpit, say, your church is an easy church to preach in. Amen. And what You may not understand what they're saying, but amen, there are places where you preach that it's hard, that they look at you, amen, and they don't respond, amen. And I, I'm talking about apostolic churches, all right? You know, and, and you could hear almost a pin drop, but they have said more than once, more than once, your church is so easy to preach. And in fact, they love coming here to preach in this church. Hallelujah. Why is that? Because you respond to the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you, when, you, when you begin to say yes and amen, do you, do you know what amen means? So be it. As the man of God has spoken, let it be unto me. So be it. And so in this congregation, Amen. When we flow with the preacher and when the word of God is going forth and we begin to speak, amen, our amens and our hallelujahs, amen, you have to understand that that has been recorded in a place not here, but there. And God is hearing the response of his people. I want to make a statement to you this morning and I don't know how you respond to it, but amen, just understand this. Success is certain when the Lord has promised it. Let me run it by you again. Success is certain when the Lord has promised it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But yet this morning in this house, there are people that are even now been, are praying for God to answer a prayer. You have pleaded with God for many months. And some of you have even pleaded with God for years. And you have had no answer. To your request. 
I'm getting ahead of myself when I say this, but I'll say it to you now. Go again. Go again. Go again. Paul would say to the Galatian church, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time or in the due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Go again. Go again. Go again. Go again. Go again. Hallelujah. Well, I've been to God and he didn't give me an answer. Go again. I've cried out to him and I'm asking, where's an answer? Go again. Hallelujah. It is not possible that God is deaf. He hears your request. He sees your earnestness. Hallelujah. And anything that concerns his glory is worth going again. Hallelujah. And so we read in the scripture, amen, that the prophet, the man of God, Elijah, had gone up to the top of Mount Carmel and there he would wrestle with God in prayer. I don't know if you caught his posture, but the Bible says that when he went up there, he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. <laughs> I wish I could do that today. I'm not even going to ask anybody to try it right now. You may not understand this. I've been in the delivery room of my three children. And I know how they got those beds that, how do I say this and not get myself in trouble? Somehow they split away. I just, I just use that, okay. And uh, they're, they're, I'm not defining it, sweetheart. <laughs> I, just, I just remember. They're unique. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> I just remembered stirrups. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. See, you provoked me, woman. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> in uh, <laughs> but anyways, I've been there. So I, I got some expertise in this area. If you haven't been there, you ain't got no room to talk. All right. Uh, but in the Bible, when a woman gave birth, she gave birth on a stool. <laughs> I just saw the expression on some of these ladies' faces out here. <laughs> oh, God, am I out there now? Huh. I can tell you this much. <laughs> I got to be careful how I word my words here because, boy, am I treading on stuff right now. <laughs> Uh, my wife is back there with her eyes 
covered and she's waiting for me to she knows me <laughs> all right <laughs> i'm sorry the stuff that's in my mind right now oh god help us but anyways <laughs> women when a woman is giving birth she will let out some anguishing cries <laughs> her face will turn red from exertion there will be groans there will be things that happen there that are best left in the delivery room <laughs> so I should just keep moving here and uh, keep myself from getting into too much trouble and so when you read this scripture you see this man as he wants an answer from God and he's much in the posture that a woman is in the Bible when they're giving birth another word that is used in the scripture is the word travail sounds so easy but just get in it and see how easy it is hallelujah you know I'm sorry I'm going to use Bill Cosby but, uh, but I'm going to use him because he did a routine on the birth of his child. And, uh, you know, and his wife was in pain. And the doctor said, give her, give her another shot. And old Bill said, yeah, I could use another shot. <laughs> okay. You, you, you don't get it. He's not, okay, a glass. All right, a glass. That's what he was talking about. And uh, but needless to say, as I'm bogged down here right now, <laughs> it's a rememberable experience. There is something about travailing prayer that is very, very powerful. There's something about when people begin to really pray in earnest. All of us in this room, if we were absolutely truthful, amen, we would say that many times that we pray, we were just merely going through the motions of prayer. We were just repeating words. The prophet was not going through motions. He was in travail. Hallelujah. He wanted an answer. Praise God. He had already seen fire once. And he saw what the fire did for Israel. Amen. And it caused Israel to say, let the Lord be God. But it was this man who had prayed and asked God to shut up heaven. And for three and a half years, there had been no rain. But now he's coming back to God, and he's asking God to let it rain. Amen. Oh, this morning, if it could just get a hold of us, if we could just understand how powerful energized prayer is if we could just understand that the things that we ask for so haphazardly and we forget even what our request was by the next day and god doesn't respond to us and we ask god well why didn't you answer it and and the response I can simply give to us is simply because we didn't come to him really wanting an answer. I'm not trying to be ugly. Oh, yes, we would say that we want an answer. But the indication, amen, of really wanting that answer was not found in our actions. Mamas, you got some lost sons and daughters. When you begin to travail, 
as a woman is travailing in birth, there are going to be some answers. I'm telling you, there are going to be some answers. Men, you so brave men that I can hear you argue all the way across the, the auditorium. That I can hear you in discussion even and your voice carries to the end of the room. And yet when it comes to prayer, you're missing an action. You have no problem giving your opinion about every subject in the world. You have no problem exhibiting your anger and letting everybody know you're angry. I'm talking to men right now. But it, when it comes to prayer, your AWL, all, what, what, what's AWL? AWOL. I was looking to Leo. I, I'm missing, I'm sorry, man, I'm missing it. AWL, in other words, the MPs, the, the shore patrol is going to be looking for you. I'm here to tell you today, to this morning in this room, you need to go again. You need to come to God with an urgency, an earnestness. Forget who hears your prayer. If they're grading your prayer, they're wrong. Your prayer is not to impress somebody else. Your prayer is to get a hold of him. And let him know just how much you want him to act. When you come to God, never come in fear. That's not suited for the courts of Jehovah. Yahweh, Jesus. The Bible tells us that we are to boldly enter into the throne of grace. Hallelujah. I'm here, God, and I'm not going away. And if you say nothing to me today, I'll be back tomorrow. If you don't say anything to me tomorrow, you can count on it. I'm coming back again. It is the spirit that Jacob had wrestling with the angel by himself. And the angel would say to him, let me go for the day breaks. And the response of Jacob is, I will not let you go unless you bless me. That's the spirit I'm talking about this morning. Go again. Go again. Go again. My God, we got a lot of, we got a lot of glass front Christians. Now, you don't even know what a glass front is. I do because I used to work as a vendor. The glass front was that candy machine that you all could come look at and shake when you didn't get what you wanted. And hopefully something's going to fall through, amen, and you'll get it and you'll get it for free. Uh-huh. I don't know about you guys. You think that can, you can just drop a few quarters into the machine and God is going to be so impressed with that that you just push A and 1 and, and you get your candy. My God, if God was like that, this world would be crazy because some of the prayers that you have prayed for were so far away from the will of God Amen. Have you ever prayed that God would kill somebody? Come on. You cursed them. You think he didn't hear that? You damned them. You were, you were requesting of God. Oh, not us. Well, come on, get off of it. Why don't you be truthful? 
You were willing to call fire down from heaven. But he didn't answer you. Because you did it in emotions and in anger. All right? He's not impressed with your little namby-pamby prayers. I put my two quarters in. And, and he's going he's gonna to give me my candy. My God. That's what produces selfish children. If, if, you, if you behave today, I'll give you a dollar. No, how about if you don't behave today, you're going to scream and holler. Because I'm your father. I'm your father. Don't mess with me. I was younger then. But my children, I'm telling you, they were afraid of me. I love them. They love me. But they were afraid of their father. What kind of generation do we have when our children? Boy, I'm off course right now, but I'm out here. What kind of generation are we going to have when our ch children have no fear or reverence of us? And they can shoot off their mouth and say whatever they want to say without any kind of retribution. Don't smart mouth my wife. Son, you may pick yourself up off the floor. I got a grandson that can testify to the fact that grandpa, as old as he is, can still pick him up off the floor and tell him in his face, don't you mess with me. I'm not, I'm not, I love my kids. My God. You just, okay, okay. And so we got the same attitude with God. We get selfish with him. We demand of him. Amen. With our little wimpy, you know, pouty voice. If you don't do this, I'm never going to talk to you again. That's impressive. That's impressive. I'll tell you what moves him. When a man grabs onto him and says, you, you ain't going to get rid of me. I tell you, bless me. And I'll wrestle you. And yeah, you can even knock my hip out of joint. But I'm not going away. I may never walk the same way again, but you're not going to get rid of me. Hallelujah. I'm going to go again. 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 Hallelujah. Do you understand? While he's praying, his servant comes back and says, I don't see nothing. Well, that had been enough for many of us. Yeah, what good is this? Put the stool away. Let's leave. Nothing's going to be birthed out of this deal. I'm going home. No. He said, go again. The difference between this generation and the generation of believers that are now gone to glory is that they understood the principles, amen, that God, you haven't said yes, you haven't said no. Those therefore, I'm going to keep crying out to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am not going to go away. I'm going to come back to you again and again and again. The Bible says he told that man to go again seven times. I realize that seven means complete in the scripture. I guess I can't say that you do it seven times. You're going to get an answer. But I can tell you this. He got an answer on the seventh time. Hallelujah. We must not allow our unbelief to control us. But we must hold on to our faith no matter how long it takes to get an answer. Hallelujah. The disciples, when Jesus was discussing forgiveness and repentance, and he told them in Luke 17, amen, that they were, again, if they sin against you seven times in a day, amen, and seven times in a day return to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Verse 5 of that chapter says, amen, Lord, Increase 
our faith. What were they saying? They saying, we really don't want to do this. We really I mean, want to retaliate. We really want to just be able to say, well, he's a crumb. Seven times a day he's done wrong to me. And seven times he's approached me and repented. I wish that we'd practice this today. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not even talking about 70 times seven. I'm just talking about seven times. I would that we as believers practice this today. Can you forgive somebody? Can you forgive them? Even if they've done seven things against you that day and each time they've come to you and, and asked, God, asked you to forgive them? Oh, you better be careful how you answer this one. I can, I can tell you this much right now. You're telling God yes. Before this day's out, you might get an opportunity to practice what you just said yes to. They said, Lord, increase our faith. You see, what caused Elijah to send his servant back to the cliffs of Carmel to look? Faith did. Faith with expectant hope. Hallelujah. There's a difference between faith and hope, ladies and gentlemen. Hallelujah. And it was faith and hope that would say to that servant go again go again go again oh brothers and sisters you quit too soon you stop short how can you say that because you didn't get the answer and if you'd have just kept going you would have received an answer but you stopped short you you just said i guess he's not listening to me i guess he doesn't care. Amen. But I'm here to tell you what faith needs to do is humbly come to him again. Not a shame. Amen. Not a shame. Amen. Faith needs to groan in us again. Faith needs to sigh in us again. And faith needs to be vehement in us again. We can never relax our hand. He used to sing, Lord, help me to hold on. Lord, help me to hold on. Lord, help me to hold on. Until that day comes. Man, I feel that spirit here today. Lord, help me to hold on. Lord, help me to hold on. Lord, help me to hold on until that day comes. Ha, hallelujah. Well, you've taught a Bible study and it didn't work. Go again. You've talked to your family and they didn't come. Go again. Hallelujah. Amen. You've talked to someone. Amen. And they seem to be interested, but they didn't show. Go again. Go again. You're wanting an answer. Go again. Go again. You need the Holy Ghost. Go again. You need God to bring healing to you. Go again. You need God to work in a situation. Go again. Do not stop. Do not stop until he is either said yes or no. But you see us, you see, it's much more agreeable to our flesh, amen, to get a speedy answer. I'm back to the vending machine, God. Yeah, yeah. You don't hear many travailing now. I'm here to tell you when you hear it, it'll make the hair on the back of your head stand up. In fact, we heard it here one morning, a Sunday morning, and there was a man that was sitting here that desperately needed God, thought he had God. Amen. He wasn't going to allow us to, to, uh, to do anything in his life because he was this brand. Amen. But he, but he, I'm telling you, he heard it and he felt it in this house. He felt it that day. 
as a dear lady began to travail before God. I felt it that day. He felt it that day. Brothers and sisters, if we could just get a hold of our God. Amen. If we could just take turn a prayer meeting into a birthing session. Let me run that by you again. If we could turn a prayer meeting into a birthing session. You know what we want? We want all our answers like right now. Give it to me, God. If you ain't giving it to me, God, you're mad at me. No. What kind of faith you got? Go again. My God. I'd like to, this is just me now. This is me. This is, I'd like to just slap a number of people right in the head. Early would. Thank God I don't get to carry a baseball back to church. <laughs> Hallelujah. It just, it wouldn't be a pretty sight. I like to thunk a couple of people. And I'm not talking about our friends that are visiting. I'm talking about people that claim to walk with Jesus. I'd like to get some expression out of their mouth. Thunk. Ow! There you go. Now you're on your way. Hallelujah. But you see, you see, uh, we just want answers like quick. Okay, well, we're like King Saul was. Remember, he's at Gilgal. He's been told to wait for the prophet. Okay. The prophet doesn't show up. And he's concerned. And, and he's afraid that his men are going to leave. And the Philistines, you know, they're breathing down their neck. They're going to come upon us. And so he will tell Samuel, I was forced to make supplication. About the time he got the altar prepared and did everything, Samuel came walking over the hill. If he had just waited. But he couldn't seem to wait he had to have an answer because amen everything's gonna fall away so at Gilgal at Gilgal amen his kingdom was beginning to be taken from him because he didn't learn how to wait on God he didn't understand that there's strength in waiting upon God hallelujah but those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint oh if somebody in the house can learn to wait on god if somebody in the house can learn to cry out to god hallelujah 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 oh god oh god Oh, God. Oh, God. You don't have any strength. That's okay. Wait on God. You don't know what to do. That's okay. Wait on God. Go again. Go again. Go again. Go again. Go again. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, oh God. We, we become envious of people that seem to be so successful with God. But we don't see the hidden part of their walk. We don't see the hours that cry out to God. We don't see them with snot running down their face. And their face is swollen from crying. We don't see that. We just see them used of God and say, I'd sure like to be like that. But you could. If you learn how to travail, God could work through you. Hello, he's just waiting for somebody to say, I'm going again. I'm coming back, God. I'm not done with this thing. It's not a done deal with me, God. You didn't say no, and you haven't said yes. I'll be back again, and I'm coming back again. And I'm coming back again. You see, you see, when you really have faith, a delayed answer causes you to search your heart. Amen. It leads you to a spirit of contrition. Amen. In your heart. Hallelujah. Deadly blows are struck against the corruption that you deal with within the chambers of your mind. 
and the chambers of your mind are cleansed. Amen. Just because you learn to wait on God and you learn, amen, I'm back again, God. And if there's something wrong with me, God, you fix it in me. And there's something going on in me that ain't right, God, you fix it in me. I'm coming back, God, with a right heart, with a right spirit. Amen. I'm going to approach you again and again and again and again. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And so Jesus gives us the parable in Luke 18. Run, Brother Mike. Ice tired. Hey, go again. spirit that Jacob said, I won't let you go until me. Bless me. Amen. The servant of God being sent eight, seven times to the brow of the hill to look for something for an answer, a prayer. Ha. Huh. And Jesus would say in 18.1 that men always ought to pray and not faint or lose heart. I'm saying to somebody here today that's catching on, go again, go again, go again. He's not going to get tired of you. That's what he's been waiting for, for you to come to him again. He would tell in the parable of the unjust judge, he said, he said, the unjust judge came to him again and again, and he would not listen, but he gave her her request. Why? Because it says in 18.5 of Luke, because this widow troubles me, I will adventure, lest by her continual coming, she weary me. And he tells us that he's not like the unjust judge. That's what his word tells us. He tells us. In fact, he says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. I'm coming home. I'm coming home this morning. I'm coming home. Keep praying. God's moving on. You just keep praying. Don't worry about us. You just pray. Huh. Seventh time, he sees a little cloud rising up on the sea, out of the sea. And that little cloud was the forerunner of torrents or torrents of rain that were going to continue to inhibit travel. That's a lot of rain that shuts down any type of travel. God wants to do something amongst us. He wants to work through you. He really does. He really does. Amen. 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 He does. He does. You see, Elijah was a man of like passion as we are. He had power with God. In other words, we're told if we just have the like passion of Elijah, we'll get God's attention. And let me re remind you, he told the servant seven times, go again. So God didn't answer Elijah on the first one. He didn't answer him on the second. He didn't answer him on the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. It was the seventh time that this man got an answer. Oh, my brothers and sisters. If his prayers 
avail of so much? Why not our prayers? We're his children. We've been filled with his spirit. He's washed us in his blood. We belong to him. If, if that prophet's prayer availed so much, why not ours? Why not ours? What's the difference? One word probably defines the difference. Passion. Passion. I end with this this morning. I've said enough. I've said enough. But I am with Luke 11, 9 through 13. Jesus, same portion of scripture. Amen. Where we have been at, where it talks about the Lord's prayer in Luke. He says, so I shall say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Is that complex? He says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. All right? Then he says in verse 10, for everyone who asks, A-S-K-S, King James, A-S-K-E-T-H. That's plural. What he's saying, just like Elisha, or Elijah up on that Carmel praying, he's saying, go again. Go again. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, Hallelujah. it will be opened. Let's stand in this room this morning. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> so I say to you that are discouraged in this room today. Oh, you ain't telling people. But you quit doing some things. <coughs> You're letting flesh control you. <coughs> You're letting flesh dominate your thinking. Your flesh just says it won't happen. Your flesh just says you can't really serve God. Your flesh has said you're a failure. You'll never amount to anything. May I give you the words of the man of God, Elijah. Go again. Go again. Go again. Go again. Hallelujah. This altar is open for anybody that wants to go again.